Hello family, Tammy Lynn here with Roar of Restored Ministries, bringing you a dose of encouragement from the Lord. The Lord wants me to tell you to expect someone or some people from your past to return unexpectedly, suddenly, and to your surprise. He says to tell you to get ready to witness what his resurrection power can do. He says to tell you that Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit, he is bringing about this return to you and to your home. Glory, hallelujah. Family, a little over a week ago, I was doing some spring cleaning and I had some of my windows open in my home, my worship music going. I was working out in my Florida room, doing uh, a little redecorating on a few things, had a few of my windows open and my patio door open. Um, it wasn't that there was a lot of breeze out. It was just cool. And I love having my windows open because you hear the sound of nature. You hear the birds chirping. And if you got to know me, you know I love birds. I love, the, I love, love, love listening to birds uh, sing and, and do their thing. Um, so but I had walked out from my Florida room for barely three minutes, if that. And upon my return, lo and behold, to my surprise, and even to my delight, because instantly it was like just this joy, this unspeakable joy just hit me and consumed me. To my surprise, when I looked, there was hundreds of leaves inside my Florida room. Now, family, I was surprised because, I mean, I've, I've been in my home all day, and it wasn't that there was the, the strong wind. It was just cool out. Uh, no leaves had blown in at all. And now, suddenly, out of nowhere, or hallelujah, there, there's another word, out of nowhere, out of the blue, um, there were hundreds of leaves. It looked like somebody had taken a wheelbarrow and just dumped leaves right there in my Florida room. And so I go over with this joy of the Lord because I'm telling you, just like this joy unspeakable hit me. Like I knew instantly, like something supernatural was taking place. I felt the presence of the Lord. I knew something was up. So I go and I start picking up these leaves, start tossing them out. I'd get like these big piles and toss them out. Oh my gosh, there were like so many of them. It took me several, several trips over to that door and to throw those leaves out. But as I'm picking up these leaves, I hear the Lord say, what do you see? And I just love it when he asks me that. He says, he asked that several times to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, what do you see? And interestingly, a few weeks prior to that, there were several days that Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12 was really strong in my spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, well, he was highlighting those scriptures and also uh, like the almond tree. Because the almond tree is one of the first things to blossom in the spring. And so he's been highlighting some things about spring. And even as I'm sharing this message, I'm reminded again. And he reminded me then of a prophetic word he had me release a few years ago called a springtime kiss. And if I would have thought about that, I would actually uh, printed that and got that ready and share that with you all. Um, but that is out there on the channel, a springtime kiss. And so he's bringing that word back up. So I've been knowing that he, he's ushering in some things like spring. There's some new beginnings on the horizon. Glory. Hallelujah. And then, so as soon as he said that, immediately I saw people of the past. Immediately I saw people of your past coming back into your life. And then I heard him say, you've seen well. Tell them what I'm doing. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. And so he has taken me to some scriptures. I'm not going to read them all. Some of them you're, you're very familiar with. You know, we've talked about it on, on the channel. Uh, we have Luke 15 with the, the prodigal son. You know, there was a, a sudden, unexpected, um, a surprise return of that son. And and then we also have Philmon. You know, the Lord has been very consistent in speaking uh, through Philmon in regards to prodigals, in regards to spouses that have gone astray, children that have gone astray, um, other people that have gone astray out of the lives of his people that are meant to be in the lives of his people. 
but that going astray or that separation that was only for a season. It was only for a time period. And the Lord had some work to do uh, in that season. And when the time was right, you know, in Philmon, we see, you know, once he had uh, gone through a transformation, he came back and he was more useful. And so I know that the separation from uh, loved ones in your life has been very, very difficult, but you need to really just keep trusting the Lord and allowing the Lord to complete what he started because you don't want someone back for um, history to repeat itself. You know, just allow the Lord to complete his works regardless of however long it takes. Now, this word is a now word, so be encouraged that, I mean, spring is like, it's here. I mean, new things are on the horizon. He's doing a new thing. And again, he said to tell you to get ready to experience what his resurrection power can do. Um, he also took me to Ezekiel 37, the valley of the dry bones, you know, the breath. That was, I'm telling y'all, there was, there was not like wind that day. It was just cool out. It was chilly out. So for those leaves, and it was hundreds of leaves. I have leaves in my yard and I have some leaves over there on my porch and stuff. But family, I'm telling you, I should have just took a picture to prove it to y'all. Matter of fact, I have one little leaf. I saved this for y'all to show y'all. This is one leaf from my pile. Now, this was a small baby leaf. I thought it was cute. And I just leave it here on my desk with a few other little things that the Lord has showed me throughout the years that are prophetic. So now I save this. This is part of my little, you know, collection. If you come to my house and you're like, what is that leaf for? Put it in the trash. Don't you touch my leaf. <laughs> that That's somebody that God is bringing back into somebody's life. Glory, hallelujah. And so he mentioned the um, Ezekiel 37, you know, because it was the breath of God that brought what was dead back to life. Glory, hallelujah. Um, we're going to take a look over in Jeremiah 24 um, and Malachi 3. I encourage you to go look at Luke 15 again. Uh, go look at Philmon. Uh, go read uh, Jeremiah 1, 11 uh, through 12. And when you're reading that, pay attention to some of those details. I mean, it's just two scriptures, but there's a lot of details in that scripture. Because there, it's significant for there to be an almond tree. Again, that represents um, springtime. And so let's go take a look over at Jeremiah 24. And I loved it. I love it. I loved it when he led me there. Because as soon as I read the title, it said, Baskets of Figs and the Returnees. What are we talking about? The Returnees. All of those leaves, I saw people. And family, the Lord has for many, many years, he, he speaks to me through nature all the time. And for many, many years, I have looked at leaves falling, like sometimes things need to fall off of us. Um, they're a pruning. So it's always been very spiritual to me, looking at leaves, seeing leaves fall, seeing leaves on the ground. But I've never in my life ever have looked at leaves and saw people. I saw people in these leaves. Glory, hallelujah. So he led me here and I just loved it. Baskets of figs and the returnees. Now this is talking about um, the basket that had very good figs and then the other basket that had very bad figs figs. Um, I'm not going to get into the very bad figs. I, I've learned, and honestly, I never wanted to have to say, hey, take this word back to the Lord, um, because I just, well, I, he's just sending me to his people. And But I've learned that there's just some people that you just need to go ahead and take this back to the Lord, please. But I know that he is definitely talking about good figs right now, and he's talking about people of the past that he is returning, he's making things good, he's making things right again. So these are good figs, okay? He's not going to bring a bad fig back into your life. And I'm going to leave it, you know, right there. So I encourage you to read all of it, 1 through a 10, and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Right now, he's ministering through me uh, to those of you who have ears to hear what he is saying. Those of you who have been seeking God with all of your heart, you've been in his word, you are the remnant, okay? And, I, and I'm very, I've got to be very bold on that because I have learned I'm learning to uh, hold people more accountable. 
And so I don't have to be accountable for what happens or doesn't happen in your life. You are accountable for seeking the Lord yourself. You are accountable for even taking this word back to the Lord. I have no responsibility of any outcome or anything in the lives of any of God's people. My responsibility is to say, stay true to my duties as a disciple of Christ and as a carrier of hope and just um, release what he tells me to release and release hope and truth whenever he commands that. And so let's let's go and let's talk about these uh, the good figs, uh, these good ones that he's talking about in your life that he is bringing back again. So verse two, one basket had very good figs, like first ripe figs, and the other basket had very bad figs, which could not be eaten due to rottenness. God is not going to bring anything rotten back into your life. And you don't want it, and you are worth more than rottenness. In Jesus' name, you are worth more than rottenness. Glory, hallelujah. Verse 3, then the Lord said to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? I just love that. That is what I heard when I was picking up those leaves. And I saw people. And then he said, good, you've seen well. Go tell them. So I've been so excited about this word. Um. He says, and I said, figs, the good figs, very good. And the bad figs, very bad, which cannot be eaten due to rottenness. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, thus says the Lord God of Israel, like these good figs, so I will regard as good the captives of Judah, whom I sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans. I really don't know how to say that. I hear people say that different ways. I try to do a search to pronounce it, and um, it's just very interesting. Do not judge me. This is a no judgment ju zone. Amen. Uh, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I used to call it Chaldeans, but then anyways, Chaldeans, y'all know what I'm saying. Let's keep going. Verse 6, for I will set my eyes on them for good, and I will bring them again to this land. He's saying, I'll bring them again. So this is a return of some good figs. And I absolutely believe that that one or those ones that you have been praying for that have strayed away from the Lord, okay, they've been living outside of God's will, I absolutely believe they are very good people. They were just fooled by the enemy. And they had grave clothes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They just had grave clothes around them. And when you think about it, grave clothes uh, wrapped around you. It's going to wrap around your eyes, your ears. Okay? They just couldn't see correctly. They just couldn't hear correctly. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you for that, Holy Spirit. So they were once with you, but there was a separation. But he is going to do it again. They are coming back by his Spirit. Glory, hallelujah. And I will build them up. And not overthrow them, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. Amos 9, 11 through 15, just hit me on that one. Amos 9, 11 through 15, glory, hallelujah, that he will plant them. Verse 7, I will give them a heart to know me. That's a confirming scripture right there to many of you because he's been speaking out of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36, 26, where he's been saying that he's going to do an open heart uh, surgery putting in new hearts, removing those old hearts and putting in a new heart that was going to hunger and thirst for him and for his ways. So he's saying here in verse 7, I will give them a heart to know me. And Holy Spirit is highlighting that this is in verse 7. So he is saying to many of you that it's finished. It's finished. The heart transplant. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. That the heart transplant has taken place. So by his spirit, there is a return coming. Glory, hallelujah. And I am telling you, this is an unexpected, it's sudden, and it's going to be to your surprise. Glory, hallelujah. Family, I'm telling you, the wind, the natural wind on that day did not bring those leaves into that Florida room. There was hundreds of leaves, and they were, it was, it was in piles. Like somebody took a wheelbarrow and just dumped it over. My littles was at school, but I actually looked around like, shoot, did somebody decide they want to come and do some yard work for me or something? But there was no one other than me and the Holy Spirit. Glory, hallelujah. 
So I will give them a heart to know me, for I am the Lord, and they will be my people, and I will be their God. For they will return to me with their whole heart. Glory, hallelujah. And family, I am telling you, when you return to the Lord with your whole heart, he wholeheartedly turns everything around and restores everything back to you. He restores you back to your original state. Anything that's been lost or stolen, he returns it. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Y'all can go ahead and continue to sit in that. Verses 8 through 10 is talking about the bad figs. So whoever the Holy Spirit is wanting to minister that to, then I trust he will minister it and that you will hear that. Um, again, you don't want anyone rotten back in your life. If they're still rotten, you need to let them continue to sit there until the Lord says otherwise and does otherwise. Glory, hallelujah. So now we're going to go over and we're going to look at Malachi 3. And I'm going to encourage you to read all of like 1 through 7. And I remember le releasing a message on this um, in the past. This is the purifier. And he's been saying that he, the purifier, is coming in and he is purifying the land and he's bringing holiness. And when that happens, guess what? We see marriages restored. We see families restored. We see children that strayed away from the father return to him and come back to mamas and daddies. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So read all of that. I'm just going to read verse 7 because this is what he's saying. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them return to me and I and there we are verse 7 again I did not plan that again 7 like he's saying it's finished like he has settled this I'm telling you I expect I expect to get the testimonies I expect to get the praise reports like I'm just telling you there is there there is power on this like he's really like thank you father God just thank you glory hallelujah that the time has come glory hallelujah your time has come decree it in the name of Jesus say my time has come glory hallelujah so okay let me start over I got excited because that verse 7 just hit me again from the days of old your fathers have turned aside from my statues and have not kept them return to me and I will return to you says the Lord of hosts but you say how shall we return and that's by being honest and what he was showing me was this honesty, this honest conversation has been taking place between he and that one that you've been praying for. And so they know now what to do. There has been a return. There's been a reconciliation between uh, them and the father. And so this conversation, because they were asking him, well, how shall I return? How shall I go back to, to my husband? How will that look like? How shall I go back to my wife? How, how, what would she say? How can I go back home to my mother after what I, I said to her, after what I did to her? How can I face my father again? How can I face them? How? And the Lord had told them, begin by being honest. So get ready to see and to experience, to encounter the resurrection power of God. Glory, hallelujah. Because this has taken place in the hearts of many, in many that have strayed away from him. So his spirit is now bringing them back. The time is now for them to come back. Glory, hallelujah. And you'll be having some honest conversations with them. So be ready. It's going to be sudden. It's going to be um, unexpectedly. It's going to be to your surprise. Certainly just be ready. And be ready to hear and to receive what they have to tell you, okay? And I, I feel to sit there for just a moment because this is really going to catch many off guard. And you say that you're ready and you've been waiting, you've been waiting, you've been waiting for this return. So upon this return and bam, just like that, they're there. I'm telling you, like it was like less than three minutes. It was very quick. Not a leaf in sight in my home. And then suddenly hundreds with no wind out there. So I'm telling you, he's saying it's going to be unexpected. It's going to be sudden. It's going to be to your surprise. So be ready just to extend that olive branch. 
Be ready like the uh, father of the prodigal son. He didn't sit there and say, well, we need to sit down. We need to talk about this because, you know, I've got uh, my one servant over here. And, yeah, if I let you come back in, then no, nope, no. Nope. He, he's been very faithful and he's been loyal to me. Um, he didn't sit there and say, you know what? Um, are you sorry about what you, you did to me? No, he didn't do any of that. Only thing he could do and think about was celebrating the return of his loved one, the one that was lost. And has now been found. Glory, hallelujah. So your season to celebrate has come. Do not waste this time by trying to conversate about anything that does not matter at this point. Don't feel like you need something from them. All you need is from God. And upon that return, that is a gift from God. And you don't need anything else other than to be a reflection of God in that moment and embrace them, get the steaks on the grill, call Tammy and tell her, come on, girl, let's celebrate. I like mine well done with some A1 sauce. I'm telling you, it is time to celebrate. So get ready, get ready, get ready for the resurrection power of God to visit your home and for that loved one that you have been separated from for a, a season to unexpectedly suddenly and to your surprise return glory hallelujah family continue to stand firm on the word of god stay strong in your faith and i will talk to you all soon shalom